guys hey v twin for christ here i got a 2003 dodge dakota here and uh when you're at a idle it wants to overheat uh previous complaints from uh this vehicle were that the uh antifreeze would be low and so on and so forth so obviously i checked here the antifreeze is not low um however you got your uh it's not on there very tight Get your little overflow tube right here. And uh, this vehicle, it's it's a little weird because you've got a mechanical fan down in here. That's uh, Let me get some light down in there. You've got a mechanical fan down in here. And you also have an electric fan. So uh, the problems that this guy was exhibiting was uh, if you were idling, it would overheat. Uh, but as soon as you pulled away, it, it would be fine. So uh, that led me to believe that maybe it was the uh, fan. So obviously with the fan, you got, you got a couple components. You got the, the fan itself. You've got the wiring to the fan. Uh, you also have the fuses and you also have the relays. So the first thing I did is I performed a visual inspection. The fan looked good. Uh, the wiring was connected. Uh, so obviously I come up here to the fuse box. I pop this cover and we'll see here. If we go to uh, right down here, you got a spare, and then you've got your uh, 50 amp power window, and then you got your starter, and then you got rad fan. Rad fan would be radiator fan. So it's one, two, three, four up. So the first thing we want to do to test this is you will need a multimeter. It's just a little $10 cheapy multimeter from Harbor Freight. And we're going to turn this on, and we're going to set it to the ohms. We're going to go up here to our uh, fan relay which is one two three four up one two three four so it's going to be this green one right here now we can visually inspect this and see that it's probably not blown kind of hard there and it doesn't appear to be blown but we're going to take it out and test it just in case so one two three four and all you got to do is just wiggle this guy out and wiggle and keep wiggling and wiggle some more all right so as we can see here if you look down in there see a little bar going across uh, let me put it this way kind of looks like a T if this fuse was burnt the body of that T pointing down uh, would end up being broken in half but we'll go ahead and test it just in case so let me try and prop the camera up here. And how we're going to test this is we're going to set our multimeter. All right, we're going to set this down around 200. And we're going to take one probe and we're going to shove it into here. We're going to take the other probe and we're going to shove it into there. And kind of, kind of difficult to do this with one hand. But pretty much your meter should so, show some type of uh, resistance. Uh, point 0.1 would be best. I'm showing about a point zero four, So that means the fuse is good. If you have a continuity tester, that would also work. A uh, nice thing about a continuity tester is you get the audible buzz. Uh, but like I said, it's a $10 meter. So now that we know that the fuse is good, our next step, if we look down here, uh, sorry about the blurriness there, it says fan relay. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. Red fan relay. So we come down here and we look down inside the block here. And we got a whole bunch of relays over here to the left area. And we got two of them down here to the right. So that one on the right hand side, that's going to be our, uh, our relay. So more wiggling. And we're going to pull this guy out. All right. Now, I hit this guy out earlier, and I think I already know what's wrong with it. So first thing we want to do is go down here and look at these connections. And instantly, when I look at this guy, and hopefully I don't wash this out, see that top one, how it's kind of green? Let me get the... That's not good. Right? They should be a nice copper color, like the ones on the right and the ones on the left. But that one right there is green. So that means that water or some type of ox oxidization has gotten down in there. 
So I'm also going to take a look at the relay itself. And as you can see here, these guys are just completely corroded. Um, but it's only two of them that's corroded. So you're probably wondering, what do all these pins go to, right? Well, I'm going to explain this here to you. Each pin on the bottom has a little number. See that 87A? And you'll see an 85, and you'll see a 30, right? Each one of these pins has a number, 87, and I think that's an 80, 86. So on this relay, and most relays have this, there will be a schematic. There it is. So I'm going to try and explain this schematic to you to the best of my ability. If I can get it zoomed in here, get some light. Duh. All right. So I'm going to try and hold this flashlight and the phone and maneuver this little pointer thing here all at the same time. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is down here. This little symbol, it stands for a diode. So that means that this connector and this connector are your power. So number 86 and looks like 85 are your power connectors. This symbol up here indicates what's called a single post single throw. So this is like your common over here. And when the relay is not energized, it'll have connectivity here. And when it is energized, it'll be connected there or vice versa. Pretty much you got number 30 going to 87A or 87, right? So if we look on the bottom here, 87, it's kind of hard to see, it's right here in the center, right? So if I look down in this hole, you'll see where the center goes, there's not even a connector down in there. There's nothing that's empty. So that tells me that when, it, when the fuse is energized, energy travels from this prong to this prong, right? And then this prong and this prong is your power. But you got to ask yourself, okay, which one's positive and which one's negative? Because if you hook it up backwards, you're going to blow the diode. Well, I'm going to show you real quick. So we're going to put our multimeter on 20 volts DC. And I'm going to try and wedge this guy in here. If I can. All right. So now we got one, we got our negative to the negative of the battery terminal. We got our multimeter set on uh, 20 volts. And we want to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative, right? So we're going to take our probe. I'm going to stick it down in here. And looky there, we got 12 volts, right? So that tells me that that guy's probably positive. I'm going to take it over here and shove it on this guy, right? I'm going to see what I have. It's nothing. So if I want to... If I want to test this relay on a bench, I know that this far side right here is positive. So I line the relay back up the way it was, and I just take my trusty pocket knife out, and I put a positive right there. And then I got a negative over here. So if you want to test this, what you can do on a bench is apply your 12 volts to these probes, and just hearing the relay doesn't cut it. What you want to do is energize the relay with the proper polarity, and then run a, a ohm meter test from this guy to this guy over here. If your ohms reads good, like maybe a 0 .5, 0 0.05 or less, your relay's good. If you read absolutely nothing at all, it could be one of two problems. Either one, your relay's burnt up inside and you'll need a new relay. Um, or two, maybe the solenoid itself isn't energizing and pulling the relay down because it's, it's a mechanical, there's like two prongs in there and when you energize it, they go chunk and they press together. And when you de-energize it, it's got a spring, pulls it apart. So this particular relay, I already tested on the bench. I'll, I'll go ahead and show that to you here real quick. And uh, we'll try and run through this. So let's, uh, let's unplug this. And we're just going to run over here. And I'm going to see if maybe I can get you propped up here so you can see. And I'll try and, try and get this situated. Okay. So we got our relay right here. And I marked this side negative. And I'm just double checking it because I don't want to burn this relay up. Okay. 
So what I got here, I got a negative. And this is set on uh, 12 volts, like 2 amps or something like that. Your amperage really shouldn't matter. But I want you to listen. Okay, you hear that? Okay, that sounds like a really good contact, but that's not all you need to have success. So now what we want to do is we want to test this guy with our ohm meter. Okay, so I'm going to try and squeeze this in here. Okay, I got it set on 200 ohms. And I'm going to go from number 30 here. Put those a little sideways. I'll go from number 30 over to right here. You'll say you got about 0.6. To me, that tells me that the relay is good. All right? And then when you de-energize this and you retest it, you will have nothing. Okay? And that, that's the way it should work. That, that's fine. Okay? So pretty much that's bitch testing a relay. So based on the fact that the, uh, the fan is working, and I did not cover that, to cover that real quick. Um, the relay appears to work. It's got all this corrosion. I'm thinking it could just be dirty contacts. Uh, but there's one, there's one other step that we got to try. Right? We need to test this fan and make sure that it works. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you back over here to the relay. Okay? And I need to go get my flashlight because I forgot it. <clears throat> all right. So here's how we're going to test this fan. I seriously doubt that the fan takes more than 10 amps. I'm going to try and get, get you situated here so you can see. I'm really sorry about this angle, guys. So pretty much all I'm going to do, I'm going to take my multimeter. This multimeter has what's called a amperage setting, right? And an amperage setting will measure the amps between your common in this other hole. Okay. So now we know that uh, we know what prongs energize the fan, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one prong to this guy. Okay. Right there. Now I'm going to take this other one. I'm trying to go across the phone here. To right here. Yeah, I hope that you can hear that because the fan's working just fine. Okay, so that tells me it's not the fan, it's not the wiring, it's not the fuse, it's definitely not the relay because we tested that. So we're, we're down to two options. It's either the relay itself or it's the temperature control on the vehicle that triggers the relay. Based on the fact that there's corrosion in here, I say we clean this guy, put it back in, see what happens. So guys, that's how you test a fan circuit in a uh, 2003 uh, Dodge Dakota. Pretty much all vehicles are just about the same. Um, you just got to start with the process of elimination here. This is not difficult to do. As you can see, it costs $10 worth of equipment. Um, the device I used to test the relay was a... Uh, battery charger uh, that I'm sure most of you have. If you don't have that, you could jerry-rig some wires directly to the battery. Uh, I don't recommend that because there's a lot of amperage inside that guy. Um, you could use an old wall charger uh, for a radio. Anything with 12 volts should be able to energize that relay. So anyway, guys, uh, I'm pretty confident that it's the corrosion causing this issue. So I'm going to clean it, slap it back in there, and we're going to call it a day. And uh, if I find out that that didn't work, then I'll post another video. But I'm pretty confident that that's the cause. Anyway, penny saved for the kingdom is a penny earned. Peace.